Okay, welcome back. So let's just jump straight into it. We, we left off on the last time, let me just transition real quick. We left off in the last video looking at objects. And we talked about the difference between, let me zoom in here, we talked about the difference between conceptual objects and physical objects. And then we talked about the fact that an object can be an entity or an attribute. Actually, I'll just zoom over here so we can see. Right. So this is what we looked at with objects. We talked about an object being an entity and an attribute. We talked about how it can be physical or conceptual. And then I gave you some examples. Right? And this is, again, all leading on from us starting to containerize space and put a timestamp on where activities are happening and where things are starting to unfold. Okay? Now, in just a minute, I'm going to take us into an, what we call an element. I'll do that in the next video. But for this video, I want to talk about this middle one here, number two. We, we call this a modification or we call this a relationship. And what, we, what we're going to see in just a minute when we get into functions, which is where an object modifies a tool, like you see there, one, two, three, there's that modification that sits in between two objects. And we want to describe that modification. And that's what we're going to look at right now. Okay, So if I kind of pop down here, I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. All right, so there are really five different types of relationships or modifications that I like to capture. And these are really, really important. And, and for some reason, this gets neglected when we think about causal analysis. We only go after, and again, what we call a root cause. All right? But there are, there are a ton of causes that sit within this kind of structure where something causes something else that lead to this top level effect, right? And lots of those causes can be sufficient, right? That there's maybe nothing wrong with them. And then there are some causes that are, because of the interaction between two objects, can be harmful. Some can be insufficient. And then sometimes they can be absent. Um, you can even have excessive. So what you see here, and this all comes out of the function attribute analysis model, and we've, a, we've brought this into causal analysis. But what you see here are the different ways in which we can label the type of interaction, the type of relationship that happens between two objects. All right, so let's talk about these for a second. I, I get this question a lot. What is the difference between, say, harmful and inefficient? Well, let's look at these in turn and see what they are. Okay, a harmful interaction is an interaction where one object is essentially doing damage to the other object, or as a result of that inter interaction, it is doing damage to the output of the system. Okay, so we say it's harmful. All right? Now, sometimes you get this situation where you have something that's insufficient. Okay, and that usually goes hand in hand. <clears throat> sorry, that usually goes hand in hand with excessive. Insufficient is where you're not quite getting the full amount of something. You're not quite getting the full extent of the output that you that you want, right? So let, let's say you're looking, whatever, at data storage, right? And, <clears throat> or actually, let's look at um, downloads. Let's say that you are getting 80 megs down, okay? And you want 100 megs down because that's what your plan specifies. Well, then that's, that's insufficient, okay? You wouldn't call that harmful unless the lack of down, the lack of megs down, so that delta between what was promised and what you're actually getting is causing damage. So maybe if you are, you're in a video call, like a Zoom call or something like that, and that lack of bandwidth is actually uh, jeopardizing your ability to facilitate a meeting or it's actually causing you problems at work, then, then in that case it could be harmful. But the owner of the system determines whether or not it's harmful or insufficient. And this is really important for the mapper because when we get in there and we're capturing this, sometimes we have to ask, is this simply a matter of insufficiency or is it actually harming the, the other object or the output of the system or the customer or whatever the case is? Sufficient is self-explanatory. It's simply denoting the fact that there is a relationship between two objects and the modification of one object is sufficient. Okay. 
I'll come back to absent in a second. We look at excessive. So excessive is here on the bottom. When we look at excessive, again, that's too much. Now, most of the time you think, oh, well, if something is excessive, it's not a problem. Well, it is and it isn't, right? I mean, let's, let's take uh, painting for an example. So if you look at a painter painting the side of the house, um, what happens when we cake on too much paint? Well, you can have two situations, I guess. One is you can have too much paint in the area of coverage that you that you'd like, and in which case uh, it can peel off, um, it uh, can, be, can create drips, it's unsightly, or you can have excessive paint where maybe it's it's spilling onto the trim, okay, in which case, again, you'd say that it, that's excessive. So again, excessive is just having more of something, and it's not, it's not necessarily harmful unless, again, the owner determines that it is harmful. Otherwise, we just call it out as excessive. And then absent. Absent's a really, really interesting one. Absent, when they used to do this sort of mapping, uh, and some people may do this, I'm not sure, but um, the groups that I'm thinking of when they used to do this kind of mapping would actually leave absent relationships out of the, of the interaction between objects and just simply say there's an absent interaction here. But when you're dealing with technology and IT, it's especially if you're looking at you know things like wireframes and you're looking at um, bringing in new systems and you're looking at automation and things like that, you actually need to call out where there is a missing interaction, where an interaction is absent. Okay, and that's literally all it means. So where you want one object to modify another, you're looking for that modification, but it's absent. Okay, so that, that will look pretty interesting when we put that on the diagram in later episodes. But for right now, this is just about us thinking about what are the relationships between two objects, we call it the modification, and how are we labeling that modification? Are they harmful, or is it harmful? Is it insufficient? Is it sufficient? absent or excessive. And the interesting thing here is once you get your map done, um, it becomes really, really easy for us to see which areas or which elements we want to make improvements to. So straight away, if you see there's a harmful interaction, you know that's a problem, right? Or if there's an insufficient or an excessive interaction, you know that's a problem, right? You wouldn't necessarily make changes to something that was sufficient because why would you? Okay. All right. So that's it for today. And I'll continue this in the next video where we'll actually look at how we put these relationships and these modifications into the element and we'll actually fully flesh out the element. Again, if you're if you're if you have any questions on this, if there's anything you want to challenge here, throw it in the comments. You know, I'm I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. I'm happy to enter into any sort of dialogue you want about whether or not this makes sense or doesn't make sense. All right? All right, thanks a lot. See ya.